Well, I, I didn't grow up in the 70s and 80s like you did, but um, I was kind of wondering why jazz for you? I mean, uh, was the Twin Cities a, a jazz hub when you were growing up? Or I guess it kind of relates to inspiration question, but right. where, where is that? When you're playing that introduction or you're playing a 20-minute song, where, where is that coming from? Right. Um, I, think, I think a lot of it was rooted in just the, dis the discovery, self-discovery of music, number one. When I was growing up, I would listen to whatever was in my house, whether it be on TV, The Tonight Show Band, or Hee Haw, or what was on TV. And then also, my dad had some classical records, some jazz records. Um, my mother listened to country music. They both listened to old time rock and roll, which I still love. Things like Buddy Holly, um, Richie Valens, Elvis. I love that music. So. I took what I had there, and then it was almost like, what's, what's next? What else is there? Because I re realized I had this appetite for music from a very early age. I would sit all day long, headphones, you know, uh, to the point where I'm sure my parents were like, wow, you know, that's, I mean, it was hours and hours and hours, or, or like, stay up. I need to be, I need to hear the Tonight Show theme. I need to hear the Tonight Show theme. <laughs> And then you go to bed. Yes, I need to hear the Tonight Show theme, you know. And so I think it was like, then it was like st studying piano, playing drums in the band. And then from then it was like rock radio. So then you get into like teenage years, rock radio. But then my older brother, who um, turned me on to such great rock music. I mean, he turned me on to The Who and Led Zeppelin and all these things when I was... Um, 12 or 13, all of a sudden you hear, you hear Led Zeppelin, it's just like Satan has appeared, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like, wow, you know, and like, and like, you know, and at the same time, I like New Wave and stuff like that. I was in the pop New Wave, I should say, but like Devo and the Cars, the early Cars, by the way, is actually heavier, much heavier than mid-80s, the Cars. Cars turned into some other thing, I don't know what happened, but Panorama, that record is pretty interesting from 1978, but anyway, I was just realized that it all was hitting me. And then what's next? So then there's prog rock next. Like so so you're into Zeppelin, then what about Genesis, you know? Or what about Soft Machine? What about Rush, which became like, whoa, talk about like the boys club, you know, like there are no girls into that band, you know what I mean? <laughs> like like, you know, it's hard to say you were into Rush, but I was into Rush. But like you know, <laughs> it's hard to admit that. I also dated here and there, and I liked Rush. Anyway, um, the, 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 um, then, then you're hearing people that are more proficient. Then, it, then you're hearing, like, whoa, what is that phrasing? That's not in 4-4. What is that? You're listening to Genesis, especially early Genesis. It's very progressive music. Still, to this day, if I listen to some of that, it's very mysterious. Peter Gabriel walking around dressed as a flower. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I'm going to do one name drop real fast here because I know we have to go, but my daughter played Barbie dolls with Peter Gabriel. <laughs> yeah, we, I recorded three records at his studio in, in, in England, and he just hangs out. I don't know what he's doing. He's like frolicking in the woods with his, fo <laughs> his foxes. But anyway, I opened the door of this room, and my daughter was there, and he's there on the floor with her, and it was a real moment for me. I was like, check that out. I was a big fan of his, and that's the first I had seen him since we had gotten there, and he's there playing with my daughter. It was very fun. Anyway, then what's next? Fusion, 70s fusion. What's after that? Oh, Art Ensemble of Chicago, um, Henry Threadgill, um, you know, Coltrane Quartet. It just went back. It just went, where are the more mysterious searches? Prog rock kind of lays it out for you, but the Miles Quintet, what's the harmony? What's Wayne Shorter's harmony all about? It became just the quest, and in a sense it wasn't, there was nothing around. You had to make it for yourself. So there was stuff around, I mean, going here and going to the Dakota, but I mean like, it's not like New York or something. So we would go to the library and check out records. We would, it was all about what you could find next. Who is, oh, now it's Cecil Taylor. Now it's blah, blah, blah. It's almost like outdoing each other, Reed and Craig and I. Who was finding out the more obscure ECM record? You know what I mean? And then it was just from there, it grew to, just to trying to find yourself within it, within all that information. I actually feel sorry for some, with the amount of information that's accessible today, I really hope people are able to actually balance 
the intake with their attention spans because there's so much available to just click a button where we really did seek it out. It sounds like lame to be going, ah, back in my day, but I mean, we really had to find it for ourselves. And that's how I got into jazz. Ultimately, it's a long thing, but that's the trajectory. It went back. I, I've never really deeply connected with post, with pre-1955. I didn't, I don't really, I'm not into big bands as much. Duke Ellington bands I like. I'm not as super into, um, Bebop, uh, the greatest, be of course, I listen to Charlie Parker and everything, but it doesn't touch me the way that the fire and everything that was in some of the 60s bands. That's really my connection to the combination of this modal harmony with this Tony Williams and all this stuff. It was really so evil and mean. It was just so, yes, you know what I mean? I needed that. If you, if you grew up listening to Zeppelin, you know, I mean, it's difficult. You're checking out Keith Moon. It's like bebop. There's, it's so, it's, there's something about it that didn't connect as much as it connected to Ornette Coleman and connected to um, Coltrane and stuff like that for me. And the punk aesthetic of all of that music. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. 